Here's a guy that doesn't believe in a no-win scenario. Here's your look at new Playmates Toys Classic Star Trek, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, Admiral James T. Kirk. Taking vengeance on James T. Kirk's superhuman tyrant Khan hijacks a starship, steals the Genesis device, and sets a deadly trap for the crew of the Enterprise. Just before we have a rendezvous with the Reliance, let's first figure out how tall the Wrath of Khan Kirk stands by grabbing the tape measure. And while I'm doing this as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at Playmates Toys that did provide this sample we're about to have a look at. Kirk, in this case, stands about 4 inches in height, or the figure's about 10 centimeters tall. And though while we're a few years behind a generation's meet and greet, I'm going to slide over the Wrath of Khan Kirk and bring in the previously looked at next generation Picard. Speaking of the two meeting up, I hope at some point Playmates continues this Star Trek trend and we might even see some further movie characters, perhaps even these two having their costumes as they would appear in Star Trek Generations. As for the accessories, though, that come include with Admiral Kirk. Admiral. Admiral Kirk. What was I saying? Oh, right, yes. The figure comes included with a display stand. Yes, you're right. It's the same stand as what we've gotten already, cast here in grey plastic with one singular peg. As a side note to this side peg, one thing I would have liked to have seen, and I may have even mentioned it before in earlier reviews, is had the peg been moved over a little bit closer to the corner. The reasoning why I say that is even just to take Kirk alone and have him standing on the, the peg, he does overlap a little bit the point of the display stand, where had they moved the peg a little bit closer to this end, he would have had the figure dead center. Still stands fine, just something I wanted to point out about the peg. I'm gonna move that to the side. The figure also comes included with a couple of other accessories. Uh, we'll look at maybe this one here first. He comes included with the captain's log. Good when the captain gets a little chilly. No, not that captain's log. He actually comes with a little log device. It, again, is in the same gray as the display stand, but unfortunately, there's no label or sticker on it. Other than just the little buttons on the top here, you'd almost even flip this over and assume that this is the right side. But I believe it's this side being the fact that there's actually little, little again, buttons here on the top. I just wish that they could have included stickers, or even if they had not put the stickers on the actual, any of the accessories, but had they included them at least, I don't mind. I'll do the extra legwork, and I could have put the stickers on myself. He uh, he technically, I don't want to say technically, he holds it okay. I mean, you kind of have to have his hand flat in order for him to hold the captain's log. Uh, the other accessories he's going to come include with as well is that he comes with the uh, the actual communicator. Now, this in this case is the communicator... So it's like the wrist communicator. So instead of actually having something like a flip-up phone, this is something that's going to clip onto his wrist. And we do actually see this. This just clips onto his wrist. Although I think the most of the time that we do actually see him wearing these is when he's wearing the excursion jackets, the longer, bigger, baggier jackets that they wear when they beam down. I do hope at some point we get ourselves the excursion suit, Kirk, and maybe the rest of the crew as well. But again, it's got some decent detailing done to it. But unfortunately, no decals or stickers. I'm going to go ahead and move that. And then the last thing that comes included with Captain Kirk, of course, he'd have to come included with a phaser. In this case, he actually comes included. I almost was quick to put it into his hand. He comes included with a Type 2 phaser. Had it facing the wrong way. It's a decent little detailed phaser. And again, this can fit into his hand. The hands, though, are a little on the bigger side. The grip is, at least. So when you are putting it in his hands... The odd bang or anything along those lines, the phaser may fall out of his hand, so just be careful when you're putting it into his hand. Those are all the accessories to come include with Captain Kirk. We're going to slide those out of the way and get a closer look at the captain himself. I keep calling him Captain Kirk. He's Admiral Kirk. Admiral Kirk. Indicated, though, by his Admiral emblem, the little badge there on the top corner of his uniform. Uh, Playmates was also nice enough to send over Spock, which we will be having a look as well, who shares a very similar type of costuming here as, as Admiral Kirk. I would imagine, though, this on the shoulder strap is going to be a little bit different because, of course, 
uh, Spock isn't an admiral just yet, but a standard issued uniform that we see in many of the Star Trek movies, the majority all the way up to Undiscovered Country. I think even in Generations, we see Scotty and I believe even Chekhov still wearing the same suit. It's one of my favorite suits, in fact, of the movie verse. He does have the more exaggerated emblem, as you can see, that has the additional rectangular shape around it. Decently painted here in gold. It has, like also in the movie, the black band and gold band that stretches across the shoulder and parallel down the side of the body. There's also a Star Trek emblem there in his belt. And you want to talk attention to detail. Like in the movie as well, the bands on the side indicate, I think, years of service and commendations. So you'll actually have those also in his arm as well. Again, the fact that playmates would find the way to put that still in there for such a small looking figure, I think is a really nice treat to collectors and fans of Star Trek. One thing also they've taken the time to do, as small as this line may be, is a panel line of red that all goes all the way down to the bottoms of the sheet. And all this time we've kind of been talking about his suits. We haven't really talked enough about Captain Kirk's face. So let's get right in there. Is that too close? Maybe close enough? Getting a closer look at Captain Kirk's, again, I call him Captain Kirk, Admiral Kirk's face. It's a good likeness, I would say, of Admiral. The thing about it, though, is the features on the face are a little soft. Does that make any sense at all? Like the features aren't super sharp, but I do still see when I'm looking at this, I feel like I'm still looking at William Shatner. Still sporting that toupee on the top of his head. Coloring is actually pretty good on this guy's face as well. As small as still they are, you can still see that they've painted the eyeballs white and the pupils in the middle of that a very dark brown. Like I said, it's a pretty good looking likeness of Captain Kirk. Again, the features are just a tad on the softer side. For the articulation on Captain Kirk... There we go, keep calling him Captain Kirk. My apologies for that. Admiral Kirk. He really belongs in the captain's chair. That's why I think I keep reverting him back to Captain Kirk. Admiral Kirk's articulation, as I continue to rotate the poor Admiral's head, is on a ball joint, so yeah, you can rotate it all the way around. The head does look down only by just a little bit, and Admiral Kirk's head does look also up as well. His neck, you may also see as well, is not quite the same coloring as his face. Though far away, you're really not going to probably be able to notice that anyways. Shoulders do come out easily at a 90 degree angle bend. You can take those same arms and rotate them also all the way around. Let's be generous on both sides. There we go. You can also rotate them on both sides. Single hinge only in the elbow, but that still allows the forearm to rotate back and forth. And you can as well rotate the hands all the way around. These figures don't seem to have waist articulation. And Captain, there I go again. Admiral Kirk, no exception. Legs do split out. The lower half, by the way, of the Starfleet uniform, at least is soft enough plastic that James Kirk can at least move his legs out. And at some point, if maybe we do get ourselves play sets, you could take the, the knees, for example, and have actually the Admiral sitting down in a chair. I do hope at some point we get ourselves bridge play sets. So yeah, he does have knee articulation as well, which also allows the lower leg to rotate back and forth. And while there may not be any articulation here for the boots, at least you can move the feet back and forth and also up and down as well. Quite a nice looking Admiral Kirk. It also ha so happens to be from my favorites of the Star Trek films, I think shared by many, same, same opinions by many of the Star Trek fans, Wrath of Khan is one of the best, if not the best, Star Trek movie. So it seems to be a good starting point, I think, for playmates to get into the movie verse by tackling Khan first before moving on to the rest of the movies. Kirk is currently doing what I suspect most admirals would be doing, just walking around with a log in their hand doesn't matter whether you've enlisted in Starfleet or just an everyday job. It seems the higher you are in importance, the more you like to carry around clipboards and seem like you're doing something. I bet you if we were to look on that screen right now, there's nothing on it. Literally, there's nothing on it anyways, because there is no stickers included. A decent, though, Admiral Kirk. I do like the fact that they included as many accessories as they did. I don't know if I would want to be leaning to displaying him with the wrist communicator. That seems more like something he's going to be wearing when he's down on a planet. And if he's down on a planet, he's likely going to be wearing his excursion jacket. They have no other time to use it. They might as well find a way to beam down to a planet, even if you're just making up a reason, just so you can wear your fancy excursion jackets. Speaking of which, though, I do hope at some point we do get ourselves an excursion Admiral Kirk, so we can have him displayed along with the rest of the crew as they're discovering Genesis and Khan. And we all know how well that worked when he ran into Khan. Well, even though technically he never really runs into Khan, it's always through a screen. It's the only time the two ever really communicate in Wrath of Khan. 
But once again, a big thank you to the folks over at Playmates Toys that did provide this sample of the Wrath of Khan Admiral. Admiral. Admiral Kirk. Oh, we could have a look at in this video. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you love the content you're seeing and do certainly want to stick around for more Star Trek, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. Though while we have wrapped up things right now for the Dear Admiral, the review of Khan, not going to do it. It's right around the corner. And we're all also going to be looking at Spock. Spock and Khan, also both from Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. Maybe as a side note, what's your favorite Star Trek movie? I'm just going to throw that out to the universe and see if you can catch it with your holographic butterfly nets. But what's your favorite Star Trek movie? I'm going to wrap things up on a high. Let me know down below in the comments section. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.